Stocks are near their highs going into the bell. Let's talk with Liz Ann Saunders, the chief investment strategist at Charles Schwab, about today's rally and what we got ahead of us. Great to see you here this afternoon, Liz Ann. Nice to see you too, Oliver. So we were just talking AI. So I tried out my Gemini. I said, give me uh, three, three market questions for Liz Ann Saunders. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Gemini says the first one should be about market breadth and concentration. That feels like that was last month. Yeah, I think that's maybe not permanently old news, but old news at least yeah, right? last week with the volatility last week. You did see better performance by equal weight and obviously rotation. The biggest uh, sort of slot of weakness, particularly in the early part of last week, was in areas like the Magnificent Seven. Now, that's not today's story. Uh, but, yeah, we did we did ease some of that concentration with the volatility that we saw last week, which all else equal, I think, is a good thing. What do you make of what's been leading us out of the sell-off here? It looks like generally momentum, kind of a tech bias, but uh, what stands out to you? Yeah, obviously a tech bias, especially on a day like today. And I think there is still money that, on, at least on a trading basis, wants to go into those prior leadership names. But I think it requires some of what we saw today from a macro backdrop perspective, better small business confidence, although uncertainty uh, spiked, and obviously a more benign PPI report. And there's an expectation that we'll see something on the more benign end of the spectrum for CPI. So I think what that does in terms of expectations for Fed policy, again, all else equal, it's my you know consistent caveat these days, is to the benefit of some of those more cyclical areas and prior, prior leadership uh, sectors like tech. Yeah, the uh, rotation winners that then turned into big losers have kind of fallen back to the pack again. So that kind of experimentation, is it over or if we get the right data, could you get that kind of small cap, uh, lower quality leadership to come back? Well, I, I, I think you could see some small cap leadership, but I think it's probably going to be within indexes of, of the small cap variety up the quality spectrum. You still see about an 18 percentage point spread over the past year in terms of, as an example, the, the zombie company's performance versus the non-zombie company's performance within the Russell 2000. So there is that bifurcation within small cap indexes, a lot of it having to do with the interest rate backdrop and all although a move by the Fed to start lowering interest rates would least on the margin be to the benefit of those more indebted companies. I still think it's too early in the cycle to really bet down the quality spectrum because when you've seen that happen in the past where there is leverage down the quality spectrum, it's usually because of an anticipated significant upturn in the economy often coming out of a recession. And I think that's the difference in the macro backdrop right now that should continue to favor up in quality, even when down in cap. Okay. Sounds uh, like uh, it fits with the message we heard from our guest at the top of the show, Dean Smith, at Folio Beyond, saying that cutting rates is not going to uh, be a panacea for some of the underlying issues. Kind of echoes that a little bit here, where the last month, one could argue, yields have been going down for kind of the wrong reason. Uh, but today, stocks are back to interpreting yields down as being good. Is that playing with fire a little bit, Lizanne? Like, if we get a deflationary print, could that lead to a sell-off? You know, that's, that's a great question. I think if it was in the context of other economic data that was weak, where you start to point the finger at much weaker economic data for what we might see in terms of disinflation or to your point, the point of your question, any kind of deflationary print. So I, I think if you get that sort of immaculate disinflation that continues absent serious deterioration in the economy and in particular in the labor market, I think that's not a bad backdrop for the equity market, but you're absolutely right. I think deflationary kind of prints on the back of, say, a weaker jobs report next week, I think that is not a positive backdrop for the for the equity market. So then uh, jobless claims, retail sales, one could argue those might actually kind of be the more important prints this week. If we kind of know inflation's trending softer overall, then those are kind of where the marginal surprise might be. Yeah, I mean, I, I, CPI is obviously important. I, I don't know that we can bank on the more benign PPI report as an automatic signal for a benign CPI report. They're not always related, but let's assume we get uh, a within consensus, somewhat benign CPI report, then yes, I think uh, attention then goes to retail sales and then the, the jobs report. And claims, 
you know, we, we, we all know as market watchers that claims are important. It's a key leading indicator. I think in particular now is that monthly reading to either corroborate what we're seeing in broader inflation data, inclusive of the, the monthly jobs report, things like jolts and, and quits, or whether we start to see a more negative economic signal from claims. We've had fits and starts with, with claims. We've had some pops to the upside that elicited some concern, but then they rolled back over again. Mm. But I think that that weekly data is really important to keep an eye on, particularly when you're in between monthly jobs reports. Great stuff. Uh, fantastic uh, analysis and prep for us for the rest of this week. Thank you very much, Lizanne. Good to see you. Likewise, Lizanne Sellers, Chief Investment Strategist at Charles Schwab. Good message here and dissection of the comeback and what's been working.